main story today is the political and economic crisis in Venezuela, an oil-rich country that's been brought to its knees, leaving many people destitute, while nearly three million have fled abroad. Once Latin America's wealthiest country, Venezuela is crushed by acute hyperinflation and an intense political power struggle. Uh, you have U.S. economic sanctions, you have oil sanctions, and these sanctions are going to be crippling for an economy like Venezuela's. Nationwide schools and government offices are closed, there are serious water shortages. We've seen very sad scenes here in Caracas of people drawing water from a heavily polluted river. It's a nightmare for hospitals. Once quite sophisticated infrastructure has been plundered and allowed to decay under Maduro's misrule. The situation in Venezuela is like a pressure cooker. It's just building and building and building. Because simply a lot of people here in Caracas can't get by. Then you have a country that's already in a very fragile humanitarian situation and you're imposing crippling economic sanctions and this risk creating a famine. During this time of process, so basically what they're trying to do is to end the usurpation of power by Maduro, build a transitional government. With a democratic government. And seek to implement as soon as possible. Major American companies now, it'll make a big difference to the United States economically if we could have American oil companies really invest in and, and produce the oil uh, capabilities in uh, Venezuela. We're aimed at a singular mission, ensuring that the Venezuelan people get the democracy that they so richly deserve. Perhaps these nutritionally enhanced biscuits made specifically for undernourished children. So we know that during the next days, there will be uh, humanitarian aid arriving at the Colombian-Brazilian border, and it will be basically a pretext for a U.S. invasion. The United States, meanwhile, is offering a direct humanitarian intervention in the form of an aid convoy on its way to the Venezuelan border with Colombia. Opposition politicians left the capital today to travel to the border by caravan. The security forces blocked the highway with shipping containers preventing their movement. As this message comes pretty clearly from the Venezuelan government that they do not accept this offering. So why won't the government let the aid in? Because the government says if it lets in aid, that's a way for the United States and other uh, what it describes as imperialist countries to invade. Venezuela is one of the three countries I call the Troika of Tyranny. The violence on the border, quote, opened the door to various potential multilateral actions not on the table just 24 hours ago. And the situation outside the capital uh, is just as bad for, for many, many people. They struggle to get food. They struggle to get medicine. More than 90% of Venezuelan exports come from oil. Uh, and what these sanctions have done is not only cut off the possibility of Venezuela selling oil to the U.S., but also made it very difficult for Venezuela to sell oil to other countries because, for example, the big boys whose socialist policies have turned that nation from being the wealthiest in South America into a state of abject poverty and despair. Here in the United States, we are alarmed by the new calls to adopt socialism in our country. America was founded on liberty and independence and not government coercion, domination, and control. It's against this backdrop that the opposition leader, Juan Guaido, has declared himself interim president and call for President Nicolás Maduro to step aside. I am confident that uh, the Venezuelan people will ensure that Maduro's day is numbered. It's up to the minister now to decide basically on which side you're going to be. But the Maduro government's already lost a huge chunk of income when the U.S. imposed sanctions and refused to pay the crude oil from, from them. Uh, and they, it's been scrambling around to find other buyers and to raise cash from elsewhere. These paragraphs is to have brought oil exports to a halt. So Venezuela is losing many millions a day, and that obviously is going to make the economic crisis, which is already dire here, still worse. Well, the blockade has drawn condemnation from the opposition leader and their self-declared interim president, Juan Guaido. Yeah, I we know the containers are crossing the bridge. We know the tanks are there. It's an absurd reaction by a regime which is not interested in its citizens. We are 
going to do everything we can to get some of this aid in. Many of the opposition, including Guaido, were groomed and trained uh, by uh, a group called the Center for Applied Nonviolent Action Strategies, which is specializes in regime changes around the world. El día lunes. I will take part in this group, this meeting of the Lima group, to meet with everyone, foreign ministers from the region, as well as with the United States Vice President, Mike Pence, to discuss possible diplomatic action of cooperation, or rather, sovereign, as it should be for each country, in a show of respect for the Constitution, so as to advance on this issue. This is, it's sad, it's sad, but it's also insane. You cannot st uh, um, believe or tell the people that you are the president, so-called president of your country, and ask for a foreign intervention. It'd be good for the people of Venezuela. It'd be good for the people of the United States. Unfortunately, dictator Maduro has blocked this life-saving aid from entering the country. He would rather see his people starve. And he went on TV last night accusing the U.S. of uh, using sabotage and cyber attacks, he said, to uh, orchestrate these, to cause these, cow uh, these power outages. Maduro ordered all businesses to close until electricity is restored. It's in a country with desperate food shortages and economic issues. Okay, so economic crisis, power outages, enormous pressure on Maduro from the United States and other countries. The U.S. plans to step up its campaign to oust Maduro uh, with tougher measures. But step aside, he has despite huge diplomatic pressure from much of the Western Hemisphere. He urged collectivos to engage in an active resistance. This is a pro-government paramilitary organization that has a record for extreme violence and intimidation and is very widely feared by Venezuelans. Because Maduro and his ruling socialist party have gathered in his presidential palace for a rally in support of him. This despite continuing economic chaos and the world's power is anyone here can remember. You see this as more evidence that the US is waging war against them. But it's unlikely to get through. Uh, it's not clear how many people will have died because of these blackouts, but uh, it's estimated at least several dozen, and I would expect that number to rise still higher. Why pull all of the rest of their diplomats out now? Well, Mike Pompeo says it's because of the deteriorating situation, but significantly he also said that the presence of U.S. staff at the Caracas Embassy has become a constraint to U.S. foreign policy. This was a plan. It was activated last year when they decided not to recognize the results of the presidential elections. The president has said that he is the legitimate president because he won the election in 2018. The opposition leader, Juan Guaido, is recognized by dozens of countries as the legitimate head of state. And many thousands of his supporters have obeyed his call for a mass demonstration. The anger is palpable. All the water predators called the world nation are tied to the world nation. Capitalism has adapted to hide the wealth of people like the Rothschilds. Once nations sign on, people use their cannibals to build the man of the predators. We don't plot.